my JK heart throbbins for Dobbins. Back in 2020, when Dobbins was a rookie, he scored a touchdown in each of his final six games. I drafted him in every league. I loved him coming out of Ohio State. Uh, he never scored below 13.1 fantasy points per game and averaged six yards per carry as a rookie again in those final six games. Or, excuse me, he averaged six yards per carry as a rookie, but never scored less than 13.1 fantasy points per game in those final six games. Um, then... Then in the uh, the off season, getting ready for the 2022 season, he tore just about everything in his knee um, in 2021. It cost him the entire season and most of the 2022 season. Uh, basically, he came back in week three. Because uh, he was not ready at the beginning of the year. So it, it took more than 12 months to even get back because he tore at the beginning of training camp in July. Couldn't get back until the end of September, beginning of October the following year. Was not right, visibly limping, and ended up uh, getting his knee scoped and had the issue corrected. Was out from week 7 to 14. Returns in week 14 and averages 5.7 yards per carry and 11.7 fantasy points per game the rest of the season last year. So he had a hot little return that our, people are not going to remember because everybody that drafted him got stung, and he missed time, and people are just going to think about how bad he looked and he wasn't right. He is also currently not at training camp. I mean, he's at training camp, but he's not participating. Uh, when asked if it was knee related, uh, head coach Harbaugh responded by saying, I wish it was a simple answer. He's in all the meetings mentally and doing those kinds of things. He wants to be out there. So we both want the same thing. Assuming that mess gets straightened out and we aren't surprised given the injury history, I think, I think that there's a chance that he can take over as the top back of this offense. To me, I look at the rest of that depth chart. There's nobody there that scares me. Gus Bus. Oh, come Tork. on. Gus Edwards. Everybody loves Gus yeah, Bus. Okay. He can't catch a um, he can't fall out of a boat and catch water, dude. Um still big. They did sign Melvin Gordon, but all Melvin Gordon is is an insurance policy, and he's a 30-year-old insurance policy at that. F fumbling machine, Melvin Gordon. Exactly. Stone hands. Dudes with stone hands, man. Belong on the Ravens in backup role. Um, the Ravens do have a new offensive coordinator this year, Todd Monken. He loves to stress the defense sideline to sideline, attacking all areas of the field in his hunt for his explosive plays. He's already stated that he'll be running three, four, and five wide receiver sets to get people out of the box. I think that actually helps Dobbins. Kind of a smaller, shiftier back. If he can get some space to actually make a guy miss and have less dudes in the box, I think that's going to open up some of that option run game too and really lends itself nicely to try and create some more explosive plays. And we've heard a lot about um, their receivers looking great so far in camp as well. He wants Monken wants to put the ball in Lamar's hand and let him make uh, the decision as far as the offense goes, as far as where the ball goes. I think Dobbins is going to have a chance to take over. And if he does, I just think that there's a chance he doesn't look back. No other running backs on that, on that, in that backfield are mildly close to competing, in my mind, for third down work. It's just going to be whether or not Gus Bus uh, can, can scratch out a small role in goal line or short yardage. If Dobbins is in for that, Man, what value he's gonna ha he's gonna be this year? Yeah, it should be noted that Gus does eat into Dobbins' carries. Not to crap all over your parade, but he he does take a, a good chunk when they're both healthy. We'll see what that looks like. Yeah, Again, it was Dobbins two years is on ago the, though. Like we have no idea. That's a different nah, coach. It, like it it happened in their playoff game last year too. I believe if I if I remember correctly, Dobbins currently going pick forty six. So just at the end of round three, um, that's okay value uh, for that's for where I have it? him personally. And and it should be noted, Jason. To your point, if, if a lot of defenses are going to focus on four. Lamar to come like, sorry. So like to make sure that that 
Lamar isn't exploding on them. And so they might let Dobbins and to your point, Dobbins came back. He, he looked really explosive, had a couple of games where he averaged, you know, eight, nine yards of carry uh, there at the end of the season once he got that knee scoped and, and looked healthy. So as long as he is actually on the field, I have no problem drafting him where he's at. Yeah. I mean, I think if you're a defense, you want anybody but Lamar to beat you, you know, so I, I yep. think I think Dobbins is going to have some room. All right. You got another sleeper for me? What's next? Let's do it. Deontay Johnson, same division. Uh, kind of sucked last year, but the peripheral <laughs> numbers are the peripheral numbers are good, right? Like is that a technical fit, term? Yeah. Can I see it a is. diagram? <laughs> yeah, here you it's go. Like it's circle. somewhere down. Yeah, it's somewhere down here. The and suck the suckage line and, is right here. And Deontay Johnson's just in it. Yeah, if there was wide a wishing well, if there was a wishing well with sucky wide receivers, Deontay Johnson would just be down in there. Yeah, he shouldn't be, but that's where he found himself last year. Wide receiver forty after being frankly really good uh, two years ago, where he finished as wide receiver nine, and we had the concerns about you know. Kenny Pickett and yeah. Mitch Trubisky and yeah. I guess those were well founded, right? Wow. Like we, we ended up having matter. him in the right. So Fancy Pros last year had him at thirteen. We had him consensus twenty four. He finishes forty. We're we're both big fans of Deontay Johnson, but the the kind of got scared off. So good job by us, I guess, having him lower. We didn't really have any stock in him, and it it didn't hurt us anywhere. Uh, Fantasy Pros currently has him at 32. ESPN's PPR cheat sheet has him at 21. Uh, We have him just outside of our top 24. Again, get all of our final rankings, Fantasy Football Sackos. You can get the Sacco sheet with all of our rankings. We'll send that out before the season to help you uh, crush your drafts. His current sleeper on eighty uh, on uh, his current ADP on sleeper. Let me say that right is uh, pick seventy seven, which is round seven. Zero touchdowns last year. Thirteenth in target share. Tenth in red zone targets. Zero touchdowns. The Seventh RT- most targets in football. Behind Jefferson, Adams, Hill, C.D. Lamb, Stephon Diggs, and Garrett Wilson. Seventh most targets. Wide receiver 40. Deontay Johnson sets season record for touchdown futility. 86 receptions on the season. No one else has more receptions without touchdowns than Johnson did in 2022, beating out former Buccaneers running back James Wilder, who registered 85 catches without a touchdown in 1984. I was say I have no idea who that is, but that's unbelievable. So close yet so far. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Steelers are going to be better. They drafted Broderick Jones for the line, right? Kenny Pickett, Matt Canada, their offensive coordinator, are back. Uh, Canada's been there since 2001. Uh, the last two years, Johnson's targets have been 169 and 147. He's still good. He's still a really good route Delicious. runner. They're gonna have like Trubisky was the starter announced from day one and then he was bad and so yeah when when Biscuit was behind center him and Deontay kind of had things going uh when Kenny Pickett took over they didn't really have kind you know didn't have the same uh momentum going and so it took him a little bit I think working all off season together is only going to help them I love Deontay Johnson's value round seven he's an easy flex play for you and so if you take quarterback tight end early and you're you know kind of sitting there you haven't filled out your roster yet Deontay Johnson around seven is somebody that I'm absolutely looking to target in that spot because he's going to have the opportunity to greatly outproduce where he's going in round seven yeah and and I think that the other piece that hasn't really been mentioned as much is how good Najee looked down the stretch last year um, I really think that he kind of found himself by the end of the season was turning it on. It's also a, a value in drafts for sure. Um, but, but that offense is going to be so much better without a rookie quarterback yeah. or, and Mitch Trubisky, Trubisky leading it. Um, well, and bitchy too. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, there you go. So <laughs> just leave them all leave last year in the past. I think it's going to get a lot better for Deontay Johnson in 2023. 